I moved up north to Scotland in Aberdeen. So I was working for Brewdog, uh, brand ambassador for India. Would you be interested in applying? I was like, when when can you fly me? Favorite food? Hyderabad mutton biryani. Wow. Came out, I got out the metro, I think it was Rajiv Chok mm. or Chandni Chok, and I was like, what have I got myself into? <laughs> that would have been something. So did, did it come back salty? And he's found that man number one is dead hmm. and the other man is bankrupt. It sounds like quite a guy to have partied with back oh, in the yeah. day, right? Yeah. A businessman that does not advertise is like a man smiling at a pretty girl in a dark room. They ginger honey said it, which I then smoke with Tandor cold smoke. We're planning to bring both Craig Elihy and Altmore to India as as soon as we can. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Discover series with the Whiskey Advisor. This is Uday Balaji. Before we get into the session, I'd like to ask you to uh, subscribe and also hit the little bell uh, so you'll get notified every time we have a new episode in the series. So in this series, I'm in conversation with brand ambassadors from some of the world's most iconic whiskey brands. Not just to know more about the whiskey, but also to know more about the people behind these whiskeys. Today, we'll be talking, we'll be discovering all things Dewar's Aberfeldy with brand ambassador Greg Benson. Hey, Greg, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. Yes. Hi, Udi. Thank you very much for having me. How are you doing? Doing very well, thank you. Hope you are too. Yeah, I'm indeed, yeah. Wonderful. So, for important things first, Greg. Yep. Cheers, Slangema. Hope you've got a drink in your glass, Slangema. And hope all of you also have a drink in your glass. Hope it's not too early in the day. Not sure if it ever is. <laughs> but uh, cheers again. Cheers. And so again, delighted to have you. So the first thing that I wanted to ask you was uh, something that I think all the viewers would be really, really interested uh, to know about. How did you end up being in India as the uh, brand ambassador for Dewar's Aberfeldy. And I hear that you're also a distiller with an interesting um, background. Um, yeah, so basically it was kind of by accident. So my background is um, I'm a chemical engineer. So I studied chemical engineering at the University of Strathclyde. And when... I was studying engineering. I took like a weekend job uh, bartending um, in a cocktail bar called Blue Dog uh, in Glasgow, where I really started to fall in love with cocktails and whiskies and rums and like just drinks history in general and alcohol production. Mm -hmm. So it was really as I was. Um, doing like my engineering studies, I started to kind of understand what I was getting taught in my engineering classes based on what I knew about um, whiskey production. Oh, wow. so things such as like reflux ratios, uh, like ABVs, boiling points, all like the like nitty gritty engineering. I was using that to understand. So then I started to think, why not be kind of a engineering and the whiskey industry so and all throughout university i was working in some of the best cocktail bars in glasgow in scotland but then i did the msc so the masters of science in brewing and distilling at mm -hmm. heriot watt university mm -hmm. so i think i'm sure you'll have heard that oh, absolutely mm -hmm. yeah uh, a world world famous course so i completed that postgraduate and I moved up north to Scotland in Aberdeen. So I was working for Brewdog, uh, the spirit site at that point called Lone Wolf. Mm -hmm. uh, I was working there as a distiller. And it was really by accident that I bumped into Fraser Campbell, our mm -hmm. global brand ambassador. Uh, I was there during the Speyside Festival, Spirit of Speyside. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to him in the Craig Elhey Hotel. And he's like, how's, like, Brewdog? I'm like, oh, it's, it's, it's good. Um, he's like, how's Aberdeen? So the city that I was in was is quite a quiet, grey, cold, rainy city. And mm -hmm. 
and he was like, oh, do you want to, we've got this job came up, uh, brand ambassador for India. Would you be interested in applying? And I was like, when, when can you fly me? Was Jay is, yeah. So I've oh, been well. here, so I've been here since the end of September. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. I mean, I'm an engineer too, but uh, I definitely well, didn't do anything as fun. I'm an electronics and communication engineer <laughs> that ended up in software. Definitely not anything as uh, fun as you. Uh, we're talking about fun. Why don't we do something a little uh, interesting now? So yep. I've got a little rapid fire round uh, set up for you. Okay. Just uh, so that we can get to know you a little better and uh, your tastes. Okay. All set? Ready. Yeah, let's do it. First whiskey you had? Famous Grouse. Favorite bar? Hot still. Favorite food? Hyderabad mutton biryani. Wow. Music or books? Music. Bacon or Nutella? Nutella. Favorite sport and or team? Scuba diving. Oh. Huh. Beaches or mountains? Ooh. Um, thing is, I'm a skier and a snowboarder and a scuba <laughs> diver. So I can't act like, I can't, nah, I'm going to pass. So on. both. Uh, coffee or tea? Before I came to India, coffee, but now full masala chai. <laughs> so it would go masala chai, coffee, normal tea. <laughs> All right. Batman or Superman? Neither. Oh. <laughs> All right. Favorite place in India? Mumbai. <laughs> Wonderful. That was really fun. I mean, I never, I really thought you'd go for bacon and uh, I, I always think that, you know, most people would go for Batman. So I'm yeah. waiting for who says Superman, but you're the first who's going to say neither. <laughs> the, whole, the whole superhero thing is, it's, it's just passed me by. Yeah. I, mean, I would say maybe Spider-Man, but the, yeah, that just passed me by. Okay. Okay. I'm a big uh, Marvel and DC geek. So yeah, that question had to go in there. <laughs> well, but one of the reasons why I put in that last question about uh, your favorite place in India Yep. is, you know, coming all the way, like you said, from Glasgow and Aberdeen yes. uh, and the Craig Elke Hotel coming to India, that is a huge shift. I've stayed in the Highlander Inn right across from the yeah. Craig Elke and you barely see a person go by in an yeah. hour, right? And then you come to Mumbai and you'll see 10 people go by in a split second. So uh, I just love to know, you know, more about how your experience in India has been and how the change has been. Oh yeah, it's, I mean, that's kind of part, one of the main reasons why I took the job was because, I mean, I'm 26, so getting this opportunity to travel around the world um, is completely something that I just, when the opportunity came up, I just couldn't say no. So, I mean... I did, I did a quite a lot of research before I came, so I thought mm -hmm. that I knew what I was getting myself into, but it's just even busier than that. Um, I quite like the chaos in, mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, it's, it's, still, it's still in like the entertaining phase for me. Uh, and I think I quickly got used to it. So within like... So on my first day, actually, I arrived on a Sunday, Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. And then I was in the office on Monday. Uh, so I'm in Gurgaon, uh, based at, um, live in Gurgaon. Uh, so on my first evening, like real evening in India, I was like, right, let's get the metro, jam a masjid, old Delhi. Yeah. Oh, myself. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. So <laughs> really like my first proper meal uh, in India was in Kareem's. So in like the back lanes of old Delhi. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a good introduction. Came out, I got out the metro, I think it was Rajiv Chok mm -hmm. or Chandni Chok. And I was like, what have I got myself into? <laughs> but start off old Delhi and then if I can do that, then you can do anything else. But I think I've taken to India quite quickly. I think I've, I've settled in quite well. Mm -hmm. um, 
I wasn't expecting you to say Hyderabadi biryani. You know, that's oh, uh, it's a good I amount mean, of spice yeah, as well. Absolutely, my favorite. Yeah, mm. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah. But you know, but going back to Dewars, uh, an absolutely storied history. One of the oh. brands, you know, literally put Scotch whiskey on the map. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Aberfeldy. So initially, I wanted to do just an episode on Aberfeldy, like I told you. But they just so inextricably link yeah. that we've got to talk about uh, Dewars and Aberfeldy together, and uh, the family. Yeah, if you could tell us, you know, take us back in history for a bit and tell us a few stories. Yeah, so really, Dewars was one of the first kind of blended Scotch companies that made its name for itself worldwide. So it goes back to the mid nineteenth century, uh, and. Perth, Perthshire, so right mm-hmm. smack bang in the middle of Scotland. There's a man, John Dewar. He worked in his family's wine uh, and like green grocer shop. Mm-hmm. And he started to blend whiskies. And he got like reasonably very good at it. Um, but then in the 1880s, he fell ill. So they passed on the company to two of his sons. So the eldest being John Alexander Dewar and the youngest being Tommy Dewar. And it's interesting to hear about both John Alexander and Tommy because although they're cousins, uh, sorry, not cousins, brothers, although they're brothers, they are complete opposite personality-wise. So John Alexander is very, like, straight to the point, quiet, reserved, like very good with numbers, businessman. Whereas Tommy is very much like a man about town, Mm -hmm. an extrovert, very like a natural gifted salesman. So what they decided to do was John stayed in Scotland and ran the business that way. And then Tommy said, right, I'll spread the word of Dewar's to increase our customer base and get more people to know. So the first thing he did was at the age of 19, he went to London. Mm -hmm. So he had two contacts of saying, okay, we've got two men, you go, very, very incredibly rich, like old family friends. You can get two orders from them, get the company kind of back on its feet. So Tommy reached London, because bear in mind at that time, there's no planes or anything. Uh-huh. It just journeys to London, and he's found that man number one is dead, oh. and the other man is bankrupt. So he was like, right, cool, we've spent pretty much the last of our money getting here. What am I going to do? So what he did was he used to go into bars. Mm-hmm and order a Dewar's white label, kind of the first expression of Dewar's, and get really, really loud and kind of obnoxious and kick up a big fuss when they didn't stock it. And make sure all the, like, the public and the other drinkers knew that this was a disgrace. Uh, this was one of the best whiskies there are. And then a week later, he would send his sales agent into the same bar. Mm-hmm. You know, hello, would you? Yeah. Uh, it's full of funny stories. And then in his early 20s, he started off his first ramble around the globe. So in two years, he visited 26 different countries all over the world. Uh, he actually opened an office in Calcutta. As oh, well. wow. Okay. Yeah. What year would that have been? In Calcutta. And all, all around kind of India and then back up through South America, then um, New York, East Coast of America. And he wrote about it in his book. He wrote a book about it called A Ramble Around the Globe. And when he was there, for example, on the journey, he used to fill empty bottles of whiskey with like say, like paper in it saying, like, if found, return to Dewar's Aberfeldy Distillery. Mm-hmm. Um, throw them overboard, and then see who replies. And he was really the first kind of marketing genius of anything, not just of 
of whiskey, of, of absolutely anything. And he involved the papers uh, and everything. So the press knew exactly what he was doing when he started to get more famous on a very, very, on a daily basis. Um, so he used to use these stories and, and newspapers to then build up the brand name. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So what year would you have set up that office in uh, Calcutta? Uh, Calcutta, I don't know exactly, but he set off on the journey uh, by ship or in 1892. Oh. So, and it took him two years. So it would have been around 1892, that kind of time. So would he have been uh, shipping whiskey at that time uh, just in bottles or would they have been casks and bottles? Um, at the time, it would have been either bottles and also flagons as well. So big mm -hmm. ceramic, so yeah. large, like five liter uh, ceramic mm -hmm. um, jugs. That was quite common there. They also would have sent some um, in cask as well um, because Dewar's was one of the first companies that did experiments on aging. So they actually sent casks out on the ships, but then didn't sell them, then brought them back to Scotland as part of like an experiment to see how that aging would affect it. Uh, that oh, wow. was in like the late 19th century. Jefferson's Ocean or yeah. something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Almost a precursor to that, I would say. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That would have been something. So did, did it come back salty? Uh, it didn't come back. Well, not, not, not quite salty, but if you're getting going to a hot climate and then back again, mm -hmm. obviously in the speed of aging, good the to, temperature, good um, obviously accelerating that aging. Also, the movement of the ship as well allows a lot more wood contact. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, that's brilliant. But you, you know, you were telling me uh, earlier when we were, there's also some fairly notorious and interesting stories also around uh, Tommy Dewar involving a car accident and stuff. Yeah. So, oh, yes. <laughs> so as Dewar's became more and more popular, uh, Tommy became like a, a very, very rich uh, mm -hmm. and successful man. His brother did as well. In fact, him and his brother were both elected members of the British Parliament, mm -hmm. but on opposite parties. <laughs> so, yeah, so his brother was a liberal, he was a Whig. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so he was known as Whiskey Tom because his best friend was Tommy Lipton. So, from Lipton's tea. Okay. Tea Tom. So, they had car number two and three in the UK. The first was the King. I believe it would have been the King at that point. The King. Mm -hmm. um, so they had car number two and three, and they had the UK's first car accident. Wow. Luckily, they were both okay, but they'd obviously just taken it round and tried to a bit too much fun. <laughs> it sounds like quite a guy to have partied with back oh, in the yeah. day, right? He was yeah. Very much a man about town as well. He spent mm -hmm. a lot of time in New York as well when he got very well known to uh, like the high society, you would mm -hmm. say. Uh, he became friends with Andrew Carnegie. Okay. So, um, for those that don't know, Andrew Carnegie, I believe, still is the richest man in history if you account for inflation. So oil, steel in America. So Andrew Carnegie has Scottish roots. And when it was one of the presidents, I think it was Harrison, was getting mm -hmm. sworn in. He, um, Andrew Carnegie, wrote to Tommy Durr asking for a keg of the finest Scotch whiskey to send to the White House. But can you send it to the back door? Because we don't want anyone to know. So Tommy obviously replied saying, yeah, that's fine. Just expect delivery on XYZ date. And what he did, again, he involved the press and everything. Ooh. He told the press from there. And then he parked a like, large truck with the Dewar's white label on the side of it, right in the front of the White House Gardens, right uh -huh. in the Oval Office. And this caused a big backlash and like 
I kind of and I don't know if you have this word in India, but in Scotland we say a stushy. So a stushy uh-huh. is like a like like a commotion. So it caused a bit of a stushy uh, amongst the newspapers, being like the president's not drinking bourbon, the president's drinking scotch, and the endures white label. That was one of the main things that catapulted jurors into say the American consciousness. And it's still number one selling scotch in America. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. But there's no advertising, like, uh, there's no such thing as bad advertising. Right? Yeah, so it yeah, sounds it, like a genius. So, it, Tommy, you're, he has what's known as a couple of like, duerisms. So, lots of funny phrases. And one of the ones I really like is a businessman that does not advertise is like a man smiling pretty girl in a dark room <laughs> he, kn- he knows he's doing it but no one else does that's actually you know that's something to think on right yeah absolutely yeah uh we were talking about the white label and uh, obviously the you know <clears throat> it need it really grew in popularity uh but where did aberfeldy come into the picture so really aberfeldy was Founded in 1896 and then opened in 1898. And really, it was part of a um, quality control point of view. Because at this time, single malts were very rough around the edges. They might not have been aged long, if at all. They also didn't know the science and technology that we know now of how to make high quality whiskey. So really blending came about as a way to mitigate these inconsistencies between the single malts. But then, so for the family, they thought that just taking whiskies from other distilleries wasn't quite good enough mm-hmm. because they couldn't then guarantee that quality and consistency, what they needed for their blend. So they opened Aberfeldy. So... Again, it's just, it's, Aberfeldy is in the county of Perthshire in Scotland. So it's less than three miles from where so John Dewar, their father, um, was brought up. Mm-hmm. And right in, on like a stream called the Patelli Burn. So they opened that as like a means to make the whiskey that they needed for their blend. Uh, so, Greg, talking about Aberfeldy, what I'm curious about also is how uh, the Aberfeldy brings its, you know, like distinctive character to the Dewars. So, what about the Dewars uh, does Aberfeldy bring? Yeah, so at Dewars, we call Aberfeldy our heart malt. So, again, it was created in order to keep the blend consistent. And the main thing about Aberfeldy, the main characteristics, is a lot of honey and a lot of fruit as well. So orchard fruit, so apples, pears, uh, and a lot of like citrus as well, and honey. So this is partly due to quite a long fermentation uh, at Aberfeldy, and then we have a lot of copper contact as well, which results in a very, very fruity style of whiskey. So if you taste an Aberfeldy 12, and then anything from the Dewar's range, you can definitely pick up that kind of honey, floral characteristics, which really are the main driver for the flavor for our blend. Yep, wonderful. Good job, good job. So talking about uh, the range, so what uh, bottlings of Dewar's and uh, Aberfell do you have available in India at this time? So, and and yeah, for Dewar's, we have the white label, uh, which mm-hmm. is like the, the first whiskey yes. really that Dewar's came out with. Yep. And then mm-hmm. moving into our age statement whiskeys, we have the 12, 15, 18, and 25. Uh, and all of those are double aged as well. So mm-hmm. they go through an extra aging process that most blended whiskies wouldn't. So instead of just aging, blending, and bottling, 
which is how the majority of blended whiskey is made. We age, we blend, and then we put that blend back into casks for between six months to a year, depending on the expression. And that um, brings everything kind of together and makes the flavors a lot more kind of harmonious and more integrated. Um, gotcha. But then as for Aberfeldy, we've got the 12. And I think, to be honest, it really depends on state to state and markets. I think definitely 12, we would say, um, but for the older expressions, I would say 18 as well. Uh, but again, it's what well, you'll know of what 29 states, everyone is slightly mm -hmm. different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, uh, you also mentioned uh, the other one. So I, I, I really enjoy the Dewar's 18 because it's got, you know, a bit of sherry character in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, my wife particularly likes the Aberfeldy, uh, but I myself am a little more of a fan of a Craig yeah. uh, So do you have anything new that you're going to be launching in India at any time? Yeah, so the Craig uh, known as the, the bad boy of Speyside, uh, it's a fantastic whiskey. I'm really excited to see it coming to India soon. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't, we're not That's entirely wonderful. sure when it's coming mainly because of like the situation at the moment. So I don't know when it will be cleared, but we're planning to bring both Craig Elihy and Altmore to India as, as soon as we can. We're planning to launch. Uh, That's brilliant. I'm yeah. really glad to hear that. Okay. Actually, guys, uh, what you can, what I'll do is I'll put up the range of uh, all these whiskies on the Dewar's uh, Aberfeldy site. So you can go check it out. There's going to be the Dewar's Aberfeldy, Craig Elke, Royal Brackla, Debrin, yeah, and Altmore. Yeah. So here's the link. Check it out. Yeah. Uh, but you know, talking about all these brands, you know, and uh, a lot of single malts also involved here. Uh, slowly, you know, it's whiskey is not like how it used to be in my, like my grandfather's time. It's just old uh, people were drinking it. Yeah. There's a big move towards cocktails, and like I see in your uh, T-shirt as well, up to my up eyeballs. To my eyeballs yeah. <laughs> so, and you got the show on YouTube. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you got chef and ordered it down. And uh, also, you do a lot of work in cocktails. So I'd just love to know, you know, the, how do you see the shift happening? How are people taking it? Is it bringing in a lot of young folk as well? Yeah, um, definitely. So there's very much this misconception that whiskey has to be drunk in a, mm -hmm. say, in a Glen Cairn, like what you've got, uh, and has to just be a... a splash of water and uh, there's a lot of people would consider rules about mm -hmm. whiskey so instead of telling people what you can't do we thought why not tell people what you can do so chefs um like worldwide are would put the highest quality ingredients in each of their dishes so why can't bartenders do the same mm -hmm. So there has, over the past, say, 10 years or so, there has very much been a push for scotch in cocktails. And it's something that I think works very, very well with the spirit. Because, think about, if you have this incredibly high-quality spirit, which has been aged for, say, 12, 15 years, and is delicious, then putting it in a cocktail makes your cocktail delicious. So, and but I think there's very much thing we're hesitant to say we're not just adding lots of fruit juices and fizzy drinks. That's completely the opposite of what we're talking about. We're talking about drinks that amplify and bring out the best in that spirit. For example, one drink that I do a lot mm -hmm. in, uh, say, like guest shifts. I also did it in You Got Chef as well, which goes down very, very well, is the Tandoor Penicillin. So Penicillin is a modern classic cocktail. In 2009, milk and honey. Uh, so it's kind of a cold version of a hot toddy. So it's 
whiskey and some smoky whiskey, lemon, ginger, honey. So I thought, how can I make that slightly more Indian? Because I think one thing about India, which we don't really get back in Scotland, is the food and drink at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you have like wine pairings and stuff in the UK, but that kind of spirit mixer and uh, food is not really as prevalent. So I wanted to twist this cocktail and make it more kind of Indian. Mm -hmm. and I thought, what's really the most Indian thing for cooking? Most Indian cooking method, and my well, my gut instinct was tandoor. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So instead of the smoky whiskey and the, the penicillin, I do it with Dewar's 12, which again has a lot of honey uh, characteristics in it, has a lot of citrus notes, lots of peach, lots of orange peel. These are all big flavors in Dewar's mm -hmm. 12. Bit of lemon, then ginger honey syrup, which I then smoke with Tandoor cold smoke. Okay. Mm, okay. Wonderful. Have a bit of that kind of full characteristic coming through, and that drink doesn't hide the fact that it's a delicious whiskey. It just make takes it and twists it to make it a new experience. Gotcha. You know that's something that I uh, say during my sessions as well. I say you know. Drink it whichever way you want it, but try to complement and elevate it rather than, you know, drown it with a mixer. Uh, I think we should have you back in another episode where you teach us to make some cocktails. Yeah. And I yeah. definitely want to try uh, the tandoori penicillin. Yeah. So guys, we just spoke about uh, You Got Chef. So here's a link to that. So you should check that out. And uh, also, if you want to follow Greg, you can check out his uh, handle as well. And if you'd like to know more about uh, Dewar's Aberfeldy, the information is right on here. So go out, check it out. So the idea with this episode is just to get to know uh, Greg a little better, get to know about the brands. And uh, now you can you know, reach out to him and, him and uh, he'll teach you to make that uh, Tandoori penicillin and all that stuff. <laughs> but uh, so Greg, thank you so much for being on here. It was an absolute yeah. pleasure. Yeah. So uh, hopefully we'll see you back soon uh, for doing to do a little more uh, Dewar's cocktails and a few more Tony uh, sorry Tony Dewar stories uh, possibly. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot. Okay. There's a lot more where they. <laughs> yeah, I struggle to remember all of them. There's so many. So we're going to say Slanjava. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much for your day. All right, guys. Uh, so that's uh, a wrap this week. Uh, it was lovely to have Greg on here and talking about Dewar's Aberfeldy. But we'll be back next week with another episode in the Discover series. Until then, cheers. Cheers.